brethren, my heart's desire and prayer to God for Israel is that they might be saved. For there is no difference between the Jew and the Greek. For the same Lord over all is rich unto all that call upon him. Zola Levin presents. Hi friends, I'm David Hart. Welcome to our series, Watch Therefore, on Zola Levitt Presents. And I'm Kirsten Hart. We are continuing our series on Bible prophecy and how we need to live expectant of our Savior's return. Dove Schwarz will be on location as well as Chaim Mailspin. We'll have our weekly Hebrew lesson and Dr. Mark Hitchcock will be right at this desk. Today we'll be discussing the flip side of the promise that God made to Abraham. Yes, we love to concentrate on the blessing for blessing, but there's also the curse for curse part. Now let's go to Dove Schwarz in Israel for our teaching. We're here in Israel in an Arab village, and behind me is a mosque. Islam is expanding in Israel and in the nations of the world. There's a Bible verse that more than ever we should understand today that will help us understand what's going on in the news. In Genesis 12, as the Lord is giving Abraham the promises of that covenant, he says, I will bless those who bless you and I will curse him who curses you. It really helps us to understand the Hebrew in this passage and it gives us a bigger punch. We know this covenant the Lord made with Abraham was passed to Isaac, Isaac to Jacob, Jacob's name changed to Israel. And the Hebrew, speaking of the Lord cursing, the word is aror. It means to obliterate. I will obliterate those who kalel you. The word kalel in other passages, for example, with King David, speaks of esteeming lightly, to esteem lightly. I will obliterate those who esteem you lightly. Wow. Wow. Now, now there's a principle called the curse for curse principle. And I'm going to introduce that to you. And, and as we go forward together in this program, I'm confident you'll see, wow, this is affecting the whole earth today. The curse for curse principle. Here's a question with regard to Pharaoh as he was assassinating, killing Israeli baby boys in Egypt, how was he doing it? By drowning them in the Nile River. Here's a question for you. What happened to Pharaoh's army? They were drowned in the Red Sea. That's curse for curse. The curse for curse principle. Now, do we see that pattern continuing in the Bible? We do. We do. Here's another example. Daniel, righteous Daniel, prayed to the Lord every day. And, and he had enemies in Persia, and they wanted to destroy him, but they couldn't find any fault in him except for how he would follow his God. And so they cooked up a plan and had him thrown into a lion's den. Here's my question. Did the lions eat Daniel? No. But who did they eat? Daniel's accusers and their families. Curse for curse. Pharaoh and the Israeli babies. Curse for curse. I will curse him who curses you or esteems you lightly. We'll continue and see this unfold through the scriptures and then even into modern day life today. We'll be right back. Uh, we stand behind the Jewish people. That doesn't mean we have to agree with everything that's done within the politics of Israel. But the reason why I support Israel is because God tells me to. Uh, that's the principle we find in Genesis 12, 3. I'll bless those who bless you, and I will curse those who curse you. Ancient empires had to find that out the hard way. I mean, we're talking the, the Egyptian empire, the Assyrian empire, 
the Babylonian Empire, the Medo-Persian Empire, the Grecian Empire, the Roman Empire. We can go on and on and on. And even modern-day despots today had to find that out the hard way, like Saddam Hussein and so on and so forth. Bless in Israel, you get the blessings of God. Cursing the Jews, you're asking for serious trouble. And these Arab nations today, and all the enemies of Israel for that matter, collectively, are asking for serial trouble, uh, serious trouble when they come up against the God of Israel. The God of Israel always wants us to support his, Abraham's, descendant line people, the Jewish people. And someone always helping the Jewish people is our friend Chaim Mailspin. Let's go to Israel right now and hear from Chaim on location. Wow, ancient Israeli pottery shards here in the West Bank. Yeah, here in Judea and Samaria. Do you know this title deed of ownership of the inheritance that God has promised is being discovered everywhere? Excavations are happening, um, approved by the Israel land authorities. Even people from all over the nations are coming to help to uncover the truth of where the tabernacle stood, where is synagogues, and just really life and the truth of God's promise. Now, I want to say that the devil isn't happy when God's word is fulfilled. Amen? Um, right now, we realize that this land is a disputed land. I remember when I first started to come here, I said, why after, you know, 3,500 years of history is this place not more uncovered, more developed? Well, because it's disputed. I can think off the top of my head of five different disputes. Economic, academic, theological, military, political disputes. Yeah, even boycotts, even uh, in universities, narratives and, and changing of histories. You know, um, we have uh, even in congregations, there's disputes, churches. Uh, and we know about the political, um, s political um, disputes that happen when any house is built in fulfillment with the promise that they would return and rebuild their houses, replant their vineyards. And we know the military disputes that happen, Hamas, Fatah. But I'm here to say that when God fulfills his word, it's amazing. When it says in Jeremiah chapter 31, verse 5, again you will plant the vineyards on the mountains of Samaria. The planters will plant them and enjoy the fruit thereof. We're standing in Judea and Samaria on the mountains of Samaria. Right behind me are vineyards. These are producing award-winning wines around the world. The children of Israel are returning. Rachel's children, who she mourned for, are returning. And... God is pleased. Let's stand with the word of God. Are Gentile believers meant to adopt the Mosaic law? Is there a separate salvation covenant for Israel that removes the necessity of faith in Yeshua? Eitan Shishkov tackles these questions and more in today's resource, What About Us? In this book, Eitan uncovers concrete scriptural evidence of God's original plan for Jews and Gentiles to become one in Messiah and work together for salvation of national Israel. Learn the importance of how the Gentile church should relate to the remarkable messianic movement of Jews accepting Jesus. An important read for believers of all walks of life. Please call us or go online. And as for the resource, what about us? We live in a topsy-turvy world where news events are sometimes twisted, often leading to untruth. Here at Zola Levitt Presents, we believe it's important to tell the truth of God's Word, the Bible, and we believe it should be proclaimed to Israel and the nations. If you believe the same way, please consider us in your monthly giving support. Thank you. We can always use your support to keep going to Israel to bring such great teaching to you. For example, we want to take you now to Israel for Dove Schwarz. He'll be teaching in an Arab village. Now let's go to Dove with more on Genesis 12. We're standing together here today in, in this Arab village in Israel in front of this mosque. You hear their, their prayers uh, to the false god Allah. And, and you'll see with the curse for curse principle that, that this is an anti-Christ, anti-Israel spirit. 
Uh, and, and, and we'll see why it's covering the earth today. Now, I spoke about Pharaoh and the Israeli baby boys, curse for curse, and Daniel and his accusers. I'll share another one with you. Remember righteous Mordecai. Righteous Mordecai uh, was hated by wicked Haman. So wicked Haman had a gallows built for righteous Mordecai. Here's my question. Did righteous Mordecai go to the gallows? No. Haman and his 10 sons went to the gallows. Curse for curse. I'm going to begin now to bring this into modern times. Into modern times. Okay? Oh, with the Nazis. With the Nazis. Uh, you know, i got to tell you, the Jews are the canary in the coal mine, folks. You know what a canary in a coal mine is. They, the coal miners, they would take that canary sitting on its perch in a cage down into the coal mine. So if there was a methane gas leak, that canary would hit the bottom of that cage dead. They knew it's time to get out of Dodge, get out of the coal mine, right? Well, so it is with the Jews. When you see this, this attack on the Jewish people, this curse coming against the Jewish people, know that that curse is coming back at those who are cursing them. Curse for curse. So with the Nazis, as I began to explain a moment ago, that was just fine to many people in the world when the Nazis were just killing those Jews. Here's my question. Did it stay localized to the Jewish people? No. Nazism covered the earth. And so many millions of people perished. Why? Because the Jewish people are the canary in the coal mine. As it goes with the Jews, as it goes with Israel, as those who come against Israel and the Jewish people do so, they can know it's going to come back on them much worse. Why? Because the curse for curse principle is I will obliterate those who esteem you lightly. Those who curse Israel will be cursed a whole bunch worse. And that's what we're seeing in the world today. Now, why are we standing here in front of a mosque? How does this pertain to the curse for curse principle? Well, when we come back in a moment, I'm going to share this with you. But know this, as you turn on the TV today, as every nation in the world is experiencing, we're going to see this unfolding right in our, in our lives today, all over the world. The experience of the curse for curse principle, it's sweeping the earth. Don't go away. This next segment is going to be so important. And it affects you right where you live today. All right? And you know what it makes me want to do? Guess. That's right. Watch therefore. It makes me want to watch for the coming of Messiah, Yeshua. It makes me want to be ready. Nations come and go at this point. Israel has the two basic friends, the USA and Holland have been the closest pro-Israel friends. Others were somewhat supportive, mostly neutral, many anti. But, uh, but this will support us come from primarily two main nations. What I know is that eventually every nation will turn. That may not happen until we're in the tribulation, but ultimately every nation will turn against the Jews. And Zechariah twice mentions in chapter 12, chapter 14, he, he, they will gather all the nations of the earth against Jerusalem. So it's going to happen someday. So there's going to come a time as we'll have no friends. Are Gentile believers meant to adopt the Mosaic Law? Is there a separate salvation covenant for Israel that removes the necessity of faith in Yeshua? Eitan Shishkov tackles these questions and more in today's resource, What About Us? In this book, Eitan uncovers concrete scriptural evidence of God's original plan for Jews and Gentiles to become one in Messiah and work together for salvation of national Israel. Learn the importance of how the Gentile church should relate to the remarkable messianic movement of Jews accepting Jesus. An important read for believers of all walks of life. Please call us or go online. And as for the resource, what about us? For many, a trip to the Holy Land is the dream of a lifetime. The Bible truly comes alive as you see the sites where so many biblical events happened, where the teaching is always from a messianic perspective. Come on a Zola tour in the spring to see Israel and Petra, or in the fall to add a cruise to Greece and Ephesus. See the land of the Bible for yourself. Contact us to reserve your dream of a lifetime. 
This whole series is about the prophetic and end times. One of the things we know about the end times is that Yeshua will reign out of Jerusalem for a thousand years. Wouldn't you love to go to Jerusalem now and pick out the place you want to reside in for a thousand years? You can. Go to levitt.com on our tour page, find out about our spring and fall tours. The wonderful thing about the fall one is you can add an extension to Greece and a Greek cruise. Can't wait for that. Yeah, I know. We hope you're enjoying learning Hebrew with us. Let's go to our lesson right now. Shalom, chaverim. One of the most easy and regularly used words here in Israel is the word slicha, and it means I'm sorry or I beg your pardon, depending on how you use it. So let's say that I bump into somebody and I want to say I'm sorry. I would say slicha. But if um, somebody said something to me that I didn't hear or didn't understand, I could say slicha, which means I'm sorry I didn't understand or I beg your pardon. So as you travel throughout the land, or as you bump into people, you can also use this word, slicha. I think this is a word that we can really use when we go to Israel next time. Excuse me or sorry means slicha. slicha. So if you're in a tiny shop and you're shopping in Israel for the little trinkets and things to bring back and you bump into someone <laughs> accidentally, oh, slicha. slicha, excuse me, I'm so sorry. Or if you're in the hotel and you're eating a wonderful dinner after a great tour day with Zola Levitt Tours and you want that dessert and there's a big line, just go, oh, slicha, and grab what you want. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> now let's go back to Dove on location in Israel. I've been sharing about the curse for curse principle of the Abrahamic covenant. How oftentimes the Holy One of Israel not only does he curse those who come against Israel, esteem them lightly and come against them, but also he does it in kind. He does it in the same way, only exponentially. And here's where I'm going with this. Here's why we're standing in front of this mosque today. For decades, the most powerful nations in the world, sadly, over the last few decades, increasingly, even the United States of America, have been pushing Israel to negotiate with and give the covenant holy land where the Lord is bringing the Jewish people, according to his prophetic word today, to pushing Israel to give that land away. And even the city of the great king, Yerushalayim, Jerusalem, giving it away to the followers of an anti-Christ, anti-Israel spirit. And so, here's a question. After 9-11 took place in New York City, did you feel like negotiating with Osama bin Laden? Curse for curse. It's hard to hear, it's hard to think in these terms. But that covenant and that promise is real. And we need to understand the fear of the Lord, which is the beginning of wisdom, as it pertains to coming against his covenant partners. If you believe in Messiah Jesus, there's a real upside to this. He's gonna fight for you too. He's gonna to fight for you too. So, as the nations of the world, the quartet, the UN, Russia, the European Union, and the USA have been leading the charge to push Israel to make them negotiate with these crazy murderers in radical Islam. Here's my question. What is covering the earth today? What is covering the earth today? One of the strategies of the so-called Palestinian refugees by the Arab League and the UN and these others I've mentioned is to force Israel to let the refugees, the so-called refugees, about five million of them, back in to flood into Israel, thus destroying Israel. What is now covering the earth today? What is the biggest crisis shaking the world today? The radical Muslim refugee crisis. Curse for curse. This changes everything. If you understand these things and you watch the news, you see, well, everything's not falling apart. Everything's coming together according to the Lord's prophetic word. That makes me want to watch, therefore, and be ready. The king is coming. 
Bless Israel, be blessed, and get ready for Messiah Yeshua. What we're seeing with the nations aligning, what we're seeing with the rise of Islam, we're seeing the hatred uh, uh, toward any, anyone that's not uh, of that movement is all indicators of where we are. And, and I mean, again, I really believe that uh, we, gotta read, we, we gotta read the signs. Jeremiah 31 is one of the greatest scriptures that talk about God's preservation. He said this, chapter 31, verse 35, as long as there is the sun, moon, and stars, there will not cease to be a nation of Israel before me. And every time that I look up in the sky and see that moon, I am reminded, counter to the politics of today, that Israel is there to stay. They're not going anywhere. God's preserving them, and he's put them back in the land of Israel. He sticks the moon up there, and he says, Hey, world, I don't care what you say. Israel's going to be right there. CNN, ABC, CNBC, the rest of the BCs need to get God the memo that this land is not, not the Jewish people's. It belongs to somebody else. But God says, no, this is my land, and I give it to who I want, and I want the Jewish people in it. We are in the middle of our series on prophecy with our guest analyst, Dr. Mark Hitchcock. We're so glad you're at this table with us. We are, our eyes are open right now yeah. with some of your teaching and it's really great. Thank well, you so much. Well, praise the Lord, thank you. Yeah. And it's such an honor. I want to talk about blessing for blessing, curse for curse. Yes. We believers, especially American believers, we love the blessing That's part. Right. That's we right. want more of that bless me, bless me, but we don't want to talk about the curse for curse. Right. Yeah, I mean, all the way back in Genesis chapter 12, God made a promise to Abraham, and it's, He makes a promise to Abraham, then Isaac, and then Jacob. And that promise is, and in the Hebrew it's stated very clearly, He says, the, the one, uh, those, the, whoever blesses you, I will bless. But then He says, the one who curses you, I must curse. Wow. So, and when we've seen that played out through history, and really that's the, I, I believe that's the only foreign policy statement I've, uh, in the Bible. In, in other words, how you treat Israel is going to be how, how you're going to go as a nation or as an individual. We've seen this many, many times in history. I heard this from someone years ago that every time someone tries to wipe out the Jewish people, the Jewish people always end up with a holiday. <laughs> and, uh, you know, you think so about that, it's true. Good. Yeah, yes. with, with Pharaoh tried to do that and, and to kill the, the young boys and they get Passover. Um, Haman tried to do it and uh, with, they got the Feast of Purim. Um, Antiochus Epiphanes tried to do it in the intertestamental period. They get Feast of Lights or Hanukkah. And mm -hmm. then, of course, Hitler and the, the most diabolical of all attempts to, to eradicate the Jewish people, they ended up with May the 14th, 1948, from that, the rebirth of the modern state of Israel. Mm -hmm. So you see this played out over time with Stalin. I mean, there's many others we could refer to. Uh, but we've also seen the other side of that, like with the United States, who overall has been a nation that has blessed the Jewish people, at least in our past. And we've seen God's blessing upon our nation. And I've always said, you know, in spite of all the other problems we have, I think one reason God's had His hand of blessing upon this country is because of our blessing of the Jewish people. And we need to, to keep that going forward as well and not let that disappear. That's right. As a pastor, do you preach much about the curse? Sure, yeah, we've, we talk okay. about it, yeah, when we talk about it. I don't know the, if we've heard much about it. Well, I don't we, we don't have. like it. We don't, don't want to hear the curse right. part. It's not comfortable. No, that's true, yeah, no, but, we like but, the blessing. but history shows it. I mean, right. you look at these nations that have, that have set themselves against Israel, and again, we're not saying in that that everyone has to agree with everything that Israel always does or the Jewish people do. You know, they're, they're human and they, their government makes mistakes, but we don't want to set ourselves against them or we don't want to be at odds with them, I think, is, is what that's telling us. And the, the United States has been a, a, a longtime friend of the Jewish people, and because of that, I think we have been blessed. And there's been, uh, you know, sometimes in, in recently where that's been called into question a little bit about how much with some of our presidents we really have been a friend to the Jewish people. Right. And I think it's a very important foreign policy for our country to be uh, pro nation of Israel and pro of the Jewish people. And I, I, God is such a covenant God. Sure. He, if he says it, he will keep it mm -hmm. forever. And I think it's very interesting that you said uh, in Hebrew how it's written, mm -hmm. the curse I must, That's right. because I have set that into 
covenant being. Right. And we as believers need to be so wise about that. Even the way we speak about mm -hmm. God's chosen people, yes. speak words of blessing, not words against. Right, that's right. And there, there's a real growing anti-Semitism in our world today. There's a, and it's called the new anti-Semitism by many people. And we need to, to stand against that and stand for the Jewish people. And we can be blessed individually and our nation can be blessed for that as well. And that's Zola's heart. Yes. So many years ago, he started that. We must bless Israel. And I'm just honored to be a small part of this as we are. And here I have the opportunity to bring a Zola song to you right now. For Zion's sake, I will not keep silent. For Jerusalem, I'll pray. For Zion's sake, will my heart be burdened. In my spirit I will say He came to us and to all the nations He came that we might all be one For Zion's sake I will not keep silent For Zion's sake I'll preach the sun Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is one He gave to us His law We've been discussing the birth pangs in this earth, everything that is happening prophetically towards the end time. And Yeshua himself told us, watch therefore. We need to be observant of what is happening in our world prophetically. That's right. You will not want to miss any of this series on prophecy. We always love to close this program with this reminder, Sha'alu Shalom, Yerushalayim. Pray for the peace of Jerusalem. Our monthly newsletter, The Levitt Letter, is free and full of insightful articles and news commentary from a messianic perspective. Visit levitt.com to find our newsletter along with current and past programs, our television schedule, and much more. Don't forget to order this week's resource by calling 1-800-WONDERS or you can purchase it from our store at levitt.com. Your donations to Zola Levitt Ministries help these organizations bless Israel. Thanks again for joining us this week. Zola Levitt Ministries and this television program depend on tax-deductible donations from viewers like you. This has been a paid program brought to you by Zola Levitt Ministries.